powerfully armed nuclear enemy, given that once the normal courses of warfare are exhausted, the conventional forces, the nuclear option is the only one left. And so it seems to me that we may be tempting Russia in that direction. And then finally, it's not obvious to me at all that the Russians will give up these newer territories. You're speaking of the Donbass, I believe, and the, and the territories on the eastern side. Now, I don't know ever when I'm reading reliable information from that area of the world, but my understanding is there is some degree of support among the local population, especially the Russian speakers, for the Russian what incursion into those territories. And so, and I'm not trying to justify that. That's, that's not my point. I'm trying to lay out the complexities. My sense is that Russia regards these as rightful territories of, of, their, of their state and that they'll be very, very loath to give up any territory. It's hard for me to imagine that Putin could do that as well without having to declare something like defeat, which is very unlikely. It's a very unlikely thing for him to do, given all the options he has in front of him. So why do you think it's realistic to assume that with sufficient pressure, the Russians will give up those eastern territories, Donbass, and to what degree are you concerned that pushing in that direction will tilt the Russians towards, well, one option is obviously the use of tactical nuclear weapons on the battlefield. And so I see way more ways of this getting out of hand than I see ways of it proceeding towards something approximating a reasonable conclusion. So well, I'll leave you with that mess of questions to, to juggle. Well, as you say, a lot to unpack there. So l let me start... I believe where you started, which is I am not advocating for a treaty of Versailles with Russia, and I'm not advocating for intentional destabilization um, of, of Russia or demilitarization, which is an absolutely unrealistic goal, which is what happened to the Germans in the near term after the Treaty of Versailles. So I'm not advocating for that at all. And I do think that there are real concerns about advocating for regime change because in Russia, the devil you know may be better than the devil you don't. Um, and, and, that, and we've seen that through history. So uh, I'm not advocating for either one of those things. Um, and I want to be clear that I'm not saying that victory would look like regime change in Russia. Um, I am concerned about them as a nuclear power being destabilized. Uh, and so... I'm not advocating for those things. What I am saying, though, is that we have not yet tested fully how much military pressure can be put on Putin to get him to concede some of those areas on the eastern side in the Donbass. Um, we have not armed them enough. Let me give you an example. When I was in, in, in Ukraine 10 days ago, President Zelensky told me that on the average day in August— um, Russia is, is shooting 56,000 artillery shells into Ukraine. Ukraine is responding with 6,000. Now, almost an 11 to 1 problem is not giving Ukraine what they need to be able to prosecute the war in the most effective way they can. And so I think Joe Biden has given them enough just enough not to lose, but not enough to win. And so part of what I think we need to do here is to give the Ukrainians the ability to prosecute the war in the way they see fit and then see how Russia reacts. It may be once we've armed Ukraine sufficiently for them to meet all of their strategic goals militarily, that Russia still will not concede some of those areas. Well, then that's when you sit down and have a conversation with your ally about what's the best deal we can make here to bring this to a conclusion. But you can't convince them, the Ukrainians, it's in their interest to do that when you haven't given them the ability as they see it, and I think just given the numbers they're right, to be able to prosecute the war in as aggressive a way as it's being prosecuted against them. And so if we're in, we need to, to go all in from a hardware perspective. 
The other reason to do that, of course, Jordan, is the message it sends to China vis-a-vis Taiwan and other areas in Asia, that they need to see that we are willing to stand up and allow an ally to have what they need to have to aggressively prosecute their own defense. And China's watching very closely on this front, and we need to send that message both as a country and as an alliance very clearly to them. And by the way, I believe if we had done that early on in Russia, we wouldn't be in this circumstance with Ukraine. And we should take that as a lesson for China and Taiwan and other areas in Asia. So I think I think that tries to answer specifically um, a number of the things that you laid out in, in your questions.